Hi, y'all. Welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Hi, Alyssa. Hey, Katie. (laughs) It's episode 73. Wow. I am not sure how to do that intro without giggling. I know. (laughs) Every time I'm like, (laughs) hello, Katie (laughs) and Alyssa. Here we are. Um, Today, we're going to cover staging. Yes. We have done a staging episode before. We've done episode 35. That was stage to sell. Yes. That was like things that you really need to do. But we had a question come in that just was a little bit more about the guidance of having the conversations with the sellers. Yeah, there were two parts to this question and it was enough for us to feel inspired. Yes. (laughs) So we're going to talk about it. Um, Not only how to deal with the customer angle, which I'm sure we covered some in 35, but also how to build your own staging inventory. What Mm -hmm. do you have? How do you use it? When do you use it? Like the more logistical. Sure. So I think we're going to get a little bit more detailed. When did you like first stage something? And- When we say stage, I don't think either of us have furniture as far as like couches and beds and things like that. That's a great place to start. I own zero couches, zero beds. The largest item I take with me is a coffee table that the way I store, I guess we can get into this in a minute, but coffee table is the biggest thing I have. Okay. I, I have bar stools and some like little benches, but nothing that can't fit in my car. Okay. Which I have an SUV, but like, so nothing that can't fit in there. And I can't handle. Right. I have packed that thing to the brim before, you know, like lamps and that kind of stuff. Um, Because I'm only staging really in an occupied home that needs some holes filled in. Okay. Like fill in the blank type of stuff, or they have something that's super dated and has to go or they don't have bar stools, but sure they need bar stools. Like um, I'm not going into a vacant house and doing now in vacant houses. I do have some tchotchke, yeah. but I'm really weird about this. I do not like um, when stagers put in a rug and two dining room chairs in the middle of a living room. Sure. Like that's yeah, not it appropriate. Doesn't belong there. So, it doesn't go there. No, my philosophy is if the room doesn't look complete, then mm-hmm. I really don't want to put stuff in it. But yeah. that means your trash key can make a kitchen look complete. Yes. A bathroom. Yes. Like you don't. You a know, mantle. A front door, a mantle, maybe some like bookshelves mm-hmm. depending on their location. So that's sort of my philosophy on a vacant house. Mm-hmm. What about you? I think one of the first houses I ever staged, I'm, I was trying to remember like how I got started into doing that a little bit. And I had was called to list this house that had been totally renovated after the flood. Okay. And it had been listed with another agent for six months and expired. Okay. It was a good agent. And the pictures were good. Yeah. I felt like the price was good. You're like, oh no, what am I going to so do? So I was thinking, you know, the pressure's on and this was a referral from another client that said, you know, I really sold you. Oh and gosh, like, so okay. much pressure. Okay, the pressure's on. And so um, I went and did a walkthrough of the house and there were just a few minor things that from walking through, for example, he had replaced all the windows in the house. Well, he left all the stickers on the windows oh. and stickers on the appliances because he wanted people to know they were new. They were new. Right. But to me, it was like, it looked, it looked unfinished. like it's flooded. Yeah. Yes. Like, right. You had to redo <laughs> Don't everything. Don't remind me. Yes. I don't yes. want to know. So um, just going to like Hobby Lobby or somewhere similar mm-hmm. and buying a few things to just, I said, you know, this house just feels sterile. It feels yes. as if it's flooded. And I need buyers to walk in here and it feel more like home, home. instead of home. as if it flooded. Yeah. So that's kind of what inspired it. And it sold in three weeks. And you were so proud. And I went, whoa. And you kept the stuff. This worked. Yes. And then I kept the stuff. Yeah. And then I just, 
I, at the time I had, I only had one house of inventory. So my goal was to just always keep it in a house. Yeah. Oh, I see. Some listing. I was basically going to use Somebody my listings for storage. storage. There are actually stagers in our market that will that post. Do that. They'll yes. post in the realtor group and they'll be like, hey, does anyone want some free stuff? Because my stuff is done and yes. I need to put it somewhere and it's, there is nowhere to store it if it's not in the house. And I think that's a good method personally. Yeah. Um, kind of keeps you on your toes for your listings. I better get another listing. Yes. I guess it got hard as inventory grew and I realized that it was helping so much sell my listings. You needed more. I needed more. Yeah. And then it was... It still, I think, would have been enough to be in a house at some point. Yeah. However, it was remembering where everything was, <laughs> right. tracking everything How do down. you do that? It, it got too complicated. Okay. So I eventually looked into a storage unit. I was shocked. My cute little storage unit that I have is $55 a month. Okay. That's it. And that's it's where you keep your... cooled. Oh, yeah? Yep. It's open 24 hours a day. And that's where you keep your staging stuff. That's where stuff. I keep my staging stuff. I just bought a shelf and put it in there and made sure everything was where I needed it. And so now when a house is empty, I just empty it instead of trying to find somewhere to put another it. house to go put How it How many houses do you have stuff in at the same time? Like, is it Maybe really three spread? or four? Three or four. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Right now, you know, inventory is low and things have sold pretty well. Yeah. And so I think I only have two right now. With that stuff are, in them. And I used to... um not do anything if they lived in the home. I okay. would just use their stuff yeah. and rearrange it and declutter. And usually yeah. I didn't have to bring stuff in. But for example, yesterday I went to meet with one of my sellers and they had done a great job decluttering. They just didn't have a lot of brightness. Right. You know, their yeah. sofa was brown. Their coffee table was yeah. brown. Yeah. So today, actually, after we record, I'm going for pictures and we have a few things that we're just bringing Add to in. set down to yeah. brighten up the space. I have, I find too, when I'm in the listing appointment and giving them those final staging list and I'm like, you need this, this, and this. If it's something I have and it's not already out in a listing, I will tell them because I'm, I'm like, hey, I have it. Yes. I don't mind bringing it over here. You know, if they don't have like a pack of wild dogs running around their <laughs> house, I'm not going to be worried. I, I mean, like my bar stools are metal. Like they can't be hurt. Sure. The coffee table is wood and metal. Like, it, sure, it's got a scratch or two on it, but it's fine. Um, I So I'll be like, hey, you know, or I have like a $20 white furry blanket from Target. Mm -hmm. If it gets ruined or you it's take okay. it with you, like fine. Like yeah. it's going to be okay. When I take it, I usually just jot a quick list. I don't ever bring more than 10 items. Sure. It's not like, and I'm not going to bring them to occupied homes. I likely won't bring linens, like the hand towels. Yeah. yeah. I may bring them to photos, but there's no way I'm getting back white you know, no. hand mm -hmm. towels and those I do use in vacant listings. So I'm not looking to like leave them, but every time, but white pillows for the couch with the white blanket, I bring those all the time. Yeah. All the time. Because if they also, I, if I'm going to your house and you've maybe, let's just say you've only been there five years, it's a five-year-old house. And this is how you've chosen to decorate it. Mm. And it's still not current. I, I don't know that I trust you to go to the store and buy the pillows. Right. So the there have been two or three times where I told my sellers to go buy things and I gave them very specific photos mm -hmm. of what I was looking for. Um, I also think it doesn't hurt to make your own little email template um, using houses like you have staged. So oh, pictures. Pictures. Ooh, that's where good. I Where I would say, hey, here's a link to three houses yeah. that I have staged. So... And I don't ask them to do all of that. It's usually um, greenery, oh, faux right. plants yes. in a white jar, something mm -hmm. simple, things that I just need something on a table. Yeah. So I'll say, look, can you just run to Target, buy three things that look similar to this? Right. They will have it. Yeah. You know, and um, he, I had this single guy and he went to Target. He said, I brought your picture with me and I showed the lady. And I, <laughs> I said, I need three things like this. And she was like, okay. okay. And so, you know, he said, yeah, they were only like $10. And he bought three of them. Oh, and my it word. really made the photos look just that dash of oh, hominess in such a my man mind. house. You oh, know? my word. That's amazing. And then he got to keep them. 
And um, mm-hmm. he did have a girlfriend at the time, and she said, I like these things. We are going to use We're them gonna in the keep next them. house. Yes. You know? He just didn't know. Well, that's what I find, too. When you give them the list of to-dos and you kind of point them like you have in the right direction, like you need a white blanket and you need a this like a type of fake greenery and like do this. A lot of times they say, oh, wow, it looks so great. Yeah. I'm so excited to take it to the new place. Yes. That works if you tell them to go get it and you put them on the right path and they get the right things. Then they're going to happily take them. And that's mm-hmm. in the staging tips. It says, you know, I'm, if I'm giving you advice on pillows or blankets or lamps or whatever, pick something that you'll want to use if you're buying it in your new home, but mm-hmm. stay within these parameters, which sure. is typically coloring or style or whatever. Right. Uh, but then you take it with you, you, you use it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's amazing. The other thing I wanted to say was if you're fake greenery, you have to get something current. So you can't like right. go borrow right, something right. from your grandma's house. You got to get it from the store right now. Like what is currently being so sold? So with this guy, he goes, well, because I told him, I said, I need you to go to Target. I need you to buy some greenery. He said, well, I do have some, but I put it away because on your checklist. He said, put it, it said, away. Put it away. So he goes and pulls it out. And I say, nope, yep. put it away. <laughs> put that away. <laughs> That's exactly. Like, if you want to carry that straight to the garbage can, you go for it. <laughs> and so I think if you are going to ask them to purchase things, mm-hmm. um, which I think is fine. I think asking them to spend 100 bucks and picking up a few I, things yes. that they get to keep. Yes. Um. Especially if I don't ask them to do that if it's vacant. Um, oh, no, no. This is just if they live in the home and I feel like it needs some sprucing for photos. Yeah. Um, I, I took a staging class once at our local board and the best little tidbit I picked up from it was they would ask their clients when they were going to like when they their first seller intake call or questions would be, what is your budget to sell? Hmm. Like not to state, but what is your budget to sell? Because that's going to include, do you have home maintenance to do? Mm -hmm. Do you have to redo the landscape? Mm -hmm. Like if we, if I start giving you the staging list, you tell me your budget. It also puts your seller in that frame of mind that's saying, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Like I need to at least be prepared to put out some money on the front end. And just like what you said, it may only be a hundred bucks. You can go to, you know, Home Depot and get some mulch and do it yourself. It's not going to cost a lot, but you need to have a budget. I had a listing interview this week, and when I got out the house, I was walking up to it, and I noticed that all the eaves were peeling paint bad. And I'm thinking, they're not ready. They're not ready Mm -hmm. for this. But um, she said that they were getting estimates on that. It was on their to-do list. She said, but we would like to know how much value it will add. And I said, it's not. I said, this is a repair. It's just a maintenance item. Yeah. It's not an upgrade that's going to, it's just part of home ownership. Yeah. And it's part of being able to sell it to someone. Right. Like nobody's going to want your home with appealing paint. No. And she appreciated the honesty. And she was, she even said, I never thought about it that way. (laughs) A repair versus an upgrade. Right. right. Like this isn't an upgrade. It's just something that you have to do. You have to do it to your house. Um, I think that leads perfectly into part of the questions for this episode were, um, how do you give that advice? How do you give the difficult advice? How do you approach that conversation conversation if you're having to tell them to repaint the whole house? Yeah. Like what are your thoughts on how do you approach <laughs> this conversation? <sighs> it is hard because I do feel like it is house by house specific. Yeah. And sometimes painting the house a different color may not change the fact that the kitchen cannot be helped or... Something like that. Yeah. You know, but sometimes paint would help or go a long way. Yeah. I think it also depends on, okay, so maybe it's an ugly color, but is it also old? Right. Or is it fresh, ugly color? (laughs) You know, that's going to depend too. Right. Okay. So take it from the pre-listing email. In your pre-listing email, you send the list of ways to prepare for for my arrival. And it's basically a method for you to deliver painful messages <laughs> without them thinking you're bullying or picking on them. Right? Right, right. So there's the list of remove your fake greenery, you know, paint to neutral colors, but do not paint them without consulting me first. Right. 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 So y'all, that's the most important part. <laughs> they, they, we want them to paint, but we don't want them to pick the color. No. Ever. Mm-mm. Never, ever, ever. Without approval. No, get approval. But what else? I think the pre-listing email might help those of us who have confidence issues or feel bad about delivering the message. At least you've given them a laundry list of, you know, remove your 
floral curtains and sure. these things that you were going to tell them regardless. Yes. And now they're like, I understand everyone gets this message. Yes. It's not just me because if they really love it, I still struggle with this. Which part? Delivering the message when I know that they just don't have a current style, but yes. they really put love or care or like the way that it is. And you know, it is kind of a mindset thing. Like sometimes I'm just really in my groove and I can yeah. go in there and just run the show and say it with confidence. And yeah. sometimes I'm just struggling. And I will tell you this, I struggle the most when the checklist is not done. When they didn't do anything from the pre. And I had this happen recently. Yeah. Where I sent the pre-listing email. Yeah. And they did have a lot to do. I hadn't seen their house, but they had started. Okay. And they asked me, they said, we think we're at a point where we're ready for you to come over. <laughs> so you're like, uh -oh. So I said, okay, great. Right. I'm thinking, and I just walked in and it was... It was just so much on the on the pre listing was still checklist there. was still there that I struggled to give guidance, right? And I didn't want to be there. That's when you're there for two hours, yes, because yes. they're like, "What about this photo? What about this? Right. What about that? Right, right, right." And I always, I, I almost like repeat, yeah. Per the checklist, <laughs> we want to make sure that yeah. this is down. That's why we remove these curtains. Yeah. That's why we flip the bedspread to something neutral and right. solid. Um, oh, man. So I, I'm constantly saying in those appointments, and I, I don't try to, like, we're not going to walk through the whole house and I'm not going to read the checklist to you. No, you I already might have be it. there for 30, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I would, and I will keep referring back yeah. to the checklist. And I will say, when you get a little farther along the checklist, let me know, and I'll come back again, and we'll do the the final detail walk. Right? You're like, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, I, for many many years and many many listings, hired a professional stager. That's all they did to come and do the staging consult. That's it was so funny to me because you're so good at it. Well, and a lot of what I know now is from. I think we did over thirty of them together. Two hour consult. Wow. Oh my gosh! Pay, I know. I but I love oh. it because see, I that is like my favorite thing to do. So I would pay for the two hour consult. I would be present. She would give them their to do list. This is I like would, my nightmare. I, <laughs> <laughs> I would take notes. I would help. Like the last 30 to 45 minutes typically was doing the living room. So we would walk the whole house. She would give the to-do list. And then she like, would you like to see how it changed? Like, let's go ahead and do this main living room. Hmm. And we would sort move the furniture around and maybe steal lamps from other rooms. Or like we would get it done. Sure. The one room and be like, okay, this is what we're going for. And they would, their eyes would light up. They would be, because it's like watching the, the transformation sure. with their own things. Because at that point, you haven't even been able to tell them to run out and buy right. the pillows or the blanket or whatever. So that part is really, really fun. And because, you know, I'm a problem solver. It's solving a problem. Like, how do we fit this puzzle together? Yeah. Like, what can we do to make this room work? Um, so that I love to do. I don't do it anymore because like you said, I'm really good at it now. Mm -hmm. So I, I just learned with re repetition. Well, we always do this. We've always been like, these are, there's certain things that I'm always forever pulling the furniture away from the walls mm -hmm. and really tight on the fireplace or mm -hmm. focal point of the living room. And sellers are always blown away. They're like, oh, wow, the room looks bigger. I'm like, right. yes, yes. I understand you're operating in a smaller area of the room, like right. when you, but you're just sitting in it. Like right. you're not running a marathon in your living room, but you get it tighter if the room feels bigger. So there were just things that kept happening over and over again. And that process though, what I guess I'm trying to get at, if you're not confident or comfortable, if you don't have an eye for design, if you don't have a clue what to tell them to do, hire a professional. It's worth it. I mean, she would charge at the most 250 bucks, 200 to 250 for two hours. I would pay for it for my listing, but my listings would sell faster because sure. they've done the work. Yeah. So find a good stager who offers a consult and use that process. And then they're delivering the message. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the bad guy. You feel bad about telling them their bedspread has got, has got to go. Well, even on the pre-listing, getting your house ready for pictures checklist, I remind them too, you know, the photographer helped me make this. Yeah. He has let me know that patterned bedspreads and curtains don't 
I photograph well. I always think it's best to blame someone yes. else. The photographer <laughs> yes. said, yes. well, the buyers in our market, market. said, yes. like, I, it's not me. And, and even the stager would always be like, I love your collection of <laughs> Easter eggs or like whatever. <laughs> I love your precious moments collection. Sure. They're so sweet. And she would take a moment and be like, oh, look how cute these are. Right, get I love rid of them. this. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and pack these up. <laughs> and it's funny to us. Oh but she had an approach. And so I learned a lot about the approach. Yes. It's not, it could be like, hey, I love, and I might walk into their bedroom and be like, oh my God, I love blue too. Blue is my favorite color. Mm -hmm. I love your whole operation. Unfortunately, you know, buyers can, you know, it's more style specific. So we'll need to remove your blue curtains and your sure. blue floral, floral bedspread and just go with white and we'll be good. And they're like, oh, okay. You know, yes. it's not about me. I'm not mad at your blue right. <laughs> floral. You do right. it. You do you. Save them for your next house. Yeah. Please use them again. So I think the more you do it, the more confident you get. Mm -hmm. But it's like I'm saying, I still struggle. Hello friends, we are so excited that so many of you are using the template course and the reviews are just pouring in, letting us know that it has helped your business as much as it has helped our business. Yes, listen to this review. Thank you so much for providing this wealth of information, knowledge, and template form. So far, I've used a handful and received positive feedback like, this is so professional, or I really appreciate how organized you are. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, Your clients are actually there. gonna say that. Yes. All right, here's another one. Thank you so much for this. I can't tell you how many times I've started this and how many notebooks of samples and notes I had. <laughs> I have ADHD and it is super hard to stay focused on getting it done. Having it all in one place is gonna make it so nice. That is what we're here for. No, just look, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just yeah. use these. Yeah, nice and simple, easy, ready to go, ready for you to put your own logo on, make it sound like you. So head over to hustlehumblypodcast.com slash course slash course and check it out that's right and you're gonna enjoy them you're gonna love them you're gonna it's love gonna change it. your life literally fired <laughs> my assistant they are the best okay, enjoy bye, the template yes enjoy okay so i have a current listing that they're you know friends from school that's how i got the listing their home is beautiful there's nothing wrong with it it was clean and prepared for me to show up and i was just like I still gave them some staging advice, but ultimately it was a dated, like t a dated neutral, right? Sure. The color was a dated neutral. It is what it and is. And although when I looked at it, I thought this is a dated neutral. I was too chicken to say, you have to paint this paint the before whole thing. we list. Yes. I did. I didn't tell them to. Well, it's hard to, because there are situations where you think this neighborhood would sell itself or this Sometimes lot I honestly would sell itself. And that's where the confidence problem was. It wasn't that I didn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I'm like, it could go 50-50. It, it could work and Make, then they don't have to spend the money. Maybe it'll fly off the I don't, shelf Yeah, in this I don't market. want you to spend the money. So I'm still developing the ultimate confidence to be like, nope, it's got to be done. Like, I don't like it that it can't, it can't stay. So point being, two months into the listing, very few showings, you know, no good offers. I'm like, okay. And it had just stopped. No showings. I'm like, it's time. It's time for us to paint. Mm -hmm. They painted the main area, all the dining, living, kitchen, and they painted the kitchen cabinets. And it made a huge difference. Yeah, the house looked, contract. And now it's under contract. So mm -hmm. it's just like... I guess my point is I don't get it right every time either. And no. sometimes if you're testing the market, you still have to be willing to have these difficult conversations later. Like, hey, remember how I said we might need to paint your cabinets? Well, right. now it's time to paint right. the cabinets. Like it's it's we're, we're there. Yes. Oh, it's hard though. It is hard. Okay. I also think the most important part of that is giving real life examples. Oh, yes. Do you find that you have some like go-tos where they're like, I don't want to... Well, you could probably tell the story of the orange house. We're not going to tell it again because we've done it before. But yeah. where you're like, no, you have to paint the house. Right. Let me tell you the story of, and everyone who listens to the podcast can now tell the story of, yes. on the last swipe of white paint, someone drives by. Someone says, drives by and buys can it. Can I buy this house? It's been on the market for three years. But people really do relate when you give them a real life well, it example. Takes, so even the house I went to recently where they said, we think we're, we're ready. We think we're done. Come at least give us some guidance on what we need to do. Um, they were struggling emotionally with letting go of this house, yeah. saying goodbye, packing up. And then when I went back two weeks later, when they really were ready for me, 
she was like a different person. Yeah. She just seemed confident in the move. And I said, well, you seem really good. And she said, I think this whole process has just helped me let go oh, of yes. this house. There is an emotional like catharsis. Yes. Of, if you follow the staging tips and you, re- especially once you remove your personal photos mm-hmm. and you start taking away your style specific items and your collections and your tchotchke, then you're like, this isn't my house anymore. Right. The walls are painted. My things are packed up. Like it looks more like a neutral, anyone could be living here. It doesn't, then they're like, now y'all, that actually impacts how well they negotiate and yeah. how well they, like the whole process is more smooth. I agree. I mean, so staging really is that little linchpin key to turning, flipping the switch from being like, I don't know if I want to sell to, mm-hmm. well, I don't feel like I live, this isn't my house. <laughs> like somebody else take this thing. I realized too how important it was this one time I, listed a house that had been, it was a flip house and it had really high, high flood insurance. Mm -hmm. And I thought finding a buyer that can pay this flood insurance and that's willing to pay this flood insurance is going to be tough. So I staged it and we got a purchase agreement very quickly and they wrote all staging items to remain with the home. It was a vacant house. Yeah. So you had to leave your inventory. (laughs) And so I called the agent and I said, look, I obviously would not kill a deal over this, but I had done the mantle. I had a big canvas over the mantle. I had staged the bookshelves. I had done orchids and towels in the bathroom. I had done white jars in the kitchen. They were like, we need all this. I mean, it was probably five or $600 worth of my inventory. Yeah. So I called the agent and I just said, okay, I don't want to lose the deal, obviously, but that stuff is mine. Right. Not the sellers. So I don't know if that would upset (laughs) your buyer. And he said, no, but they just loved it and wanted me to ask. Oh. And I said, so it's okay if we remove it and you're, you're like, not- I need that stuff. Right. I would like, <laughs> please to- don't make me buy it again. I would like to keep it. And he said, yeah, I'll just tell her it's not the sellers. And he said, perfect. Oh. So I got to keep it, but they were like, what they loved it that much. Yeah. So I thought, and that was the second house I ever did. And I just went, wow, this it's huge. It works. This is a big deal. And we were in a subdivision where the day on market was very high. Yeah. And I had prepared my seller that we might be here a while. Yep. And then we weren't. And it just, it seemed as if every time I staged something and just made it feel like home. Yep. It, it sold. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Even just the welcome mat at the front door. Yeah. Like you have to create a feeling. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Okay. So you're not worried about hurting your client's feelings. I think I'm getting there. Um, There are ways to avoid that. Yeah. And then I'm going to tell you my, but I also think that the confidence angle is you leaning into saying, I am in your, in X market all the time with buyers. That buyers do not buy houses with uh, orange kitchens. They right. don't buy houses with red they dining rooms. To. They don't need to. They'll wait. And I think the best thing to always say is your competition is new construction. Yes. So if they don't like these old houses, they're just going to go find one that's newer and you have to sort of live up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a good story that I like to tell sometimes when people are like, I don't, you know, I sold a house that was not even five years old. It had, this was you know, a good five or so years ago, it had stained cabinets. Okay. The mantle, the the built-ins in the kitchen, and it was an open floor plan. Otherwise, like, and I mean dark stained, like mm. like an unusually, like a style specific dark, like black dark stain. Yeah. And the walls were a nice neutral, like off white, off white, and the counter, like the house wasn't old. Yeah. It was totally current. It was, it was a very nice house. And when I went to the listing appointment, I'm like, you you have to paint these cabinets. You have to paint these cabinets. And they were like, really? I mean, the house is only, like, it might have been three years old. The house is only three years old. Why do we have to do that? And I said, I will tell you why. <laughs> you know the house around the corner that sat on the market for six months? I know this because I work in your neighborhood. And I know because I talked to that agent because I had a buyer who wanted to look at that house. 
they actually got a contract on that house. It was brand new, even. The builder got a contract on the house that said they wanted the stained cabinets painted white. And the builder oh said, I will not do it. And it proceeded to sit on the market for six additional months. And I said, oh the market says your cabinets need to be painted. Right. I am telling you, this is the example of what happens if you don't do it. Right. I cannot guarantee that that I, I believe that would be the same thing that might happen to you. Sure. Except... You might not even get the buyer to show up to your house to look at it. They mm -hmm. might look at the picture online and not even think to write an offer that say, says paint yeah, the cabinet. That's just not ours. It's, yeah. just not, it's just not my not style. So I think that, um, and it worked. He well, going like, back to my painted. style, mm -hmm. I tell them the goal is to reach the style of the masses. Yes. We are trying to reach the broadest buyer that we can instead of limiting ourselves to people that really appreciate a good stain cabinet yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, right. And it depends on the stain. We're not <sighs> totally hating on stain cabinets. No, but. some of them are, I haven't always told every client no, to no, no, paint no. a cabinet. Definitely not. But, just, but there's that nineties era of cabinet that pretty much has to be <laughs> that painted. orange oak cannot yeah, stay it, cannot it stay. can't stay it can't stay it's just okay not an option so let's talk about how like with the logistics you have your staging items how do you approach staging an occupied listing do you ever you bring some I of will your not things? do anything if they are home okay so if they're living there you're not going to bring you know i ask my clients to leave for pictures right and so say the photographer is coming at noon, mm -hmm. I will ask them to be gone from 11 to 1. Okay. But you're leaving some of your belongings in the house that they're My living in. My staging items I will bring with me. We will stage mm -hmm. what needs to be staged. And then the photographer will come. Yeah. And take photos. I like it. Um, I don't do a lot of occupied staging. Yeah. Only if... I think I have a canvas that would really help replace the one that they have. Yeah. Or if it needs a few greenery items. Yeah. Usually I'm asking them, I may have only done one or two where I brought stuff into somebody else's home. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I just ask them to do it or I could use what they had and just kind right, of make it, it. work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, so you're not often having to deal with remembering what you left there. No. And okay, that's fine. You're just like, if they need it, they got to get it or you use yes. what they have. Yes. Okay. On the other hand, I very frequently bring them an item or two mm -hmm. or 10. Mm -hmm. But again, they all fit within my car. Sure. So if they have like a beat up old ottoman as their coffee table or as i find very frequently no coffee table at all right all the time people no are coffee getting table. coffee tables i'm like well, i kind of like it i got rid of mine it's fine you don't have to have one for life but you need to have one to stage your home so i would be like look i've got this coffee table i will bring it we'll put your tchotchke on it or whatever books and and so i bring the coffee table i make a note in their file i brought the coffee table and then before closing you know after the appraisers come i'll come grab it you yes know? i always unstage after appraisal yeah after appraisal got to stay there until then and then i'll come grab it um uh, so I, I don't mind. Nothing that I have is so valuable that if it got damaged yeah, or, me either. or yeah. gone with them that I'm going to like cry. These are just expenses of the business, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be fine. So I have a list of staging essentials, things that I have acquired over time and use repeatedly and, and will often use within an occupied or sometimes a vacant home. Are you ready? Yes. Coffee table. Okay. Bench and it is a small, like a one. I don't know. I would call one it maybe seater, three yeah. feet one seater. It's not big, but it's so it's helpful. It's so cute. Really cute. It came from Home Goods. It was fifty bucks. Got the bench. It goes to so many houses. <laughs> I cannot even tell you. And I, I have taught this um, occupied staging course at the board, which I think we talked about in the last episode. So I have my slides, and in my slides there are pictures of where this bench has been. You need to compile them all. Oh my God, it's so many. Like the bench is everywhere. And the other thing that goes everywhere, the two bar stools that I bought yeah. for like $25 a piece at the TJ Maxx. They are just that standard um, kind of modern-y looking metal, no back, they're actually, they're oil rub bronze-ish in yeah. color. So they work with pretty much anything. Yeah. Um, and the two bar stools go everywhere. The garden stool gets used over and over again. Accent pillows. 
um, a light colored rug. Hmm. This one is huge, like a big eight by 10. Yeah. That one's huge because the rugs really like help. Oh my God. Yes. They make a big difference. Especially um, older homes. Oh yeah. Baskets, fake orchids, um, two lamps. So that when you go to the master bedroom and there are no lamps, you got to have two of the same lamps. A lot of times I will use the lamp in the foyer. Like they don't need it in the bedroom, but having two of the same lamp yes. allows me to also use it in the master. Right. Um, I have a foyer table. Okay. Because even in a vacant home, if there's a foyer, I will t- sometimes bring the foyer table. Mm-hmm. I need somewhere to put, you know, the, like the welcome stuff, that there's a binder. I just, it feels like the foyer is your first thing you're seeing. I want that sure. to be done. Um, fake lemons and a, and a white <laughs> bowl. This is key. You need the fake lemons. They Some always, freshness. they always look good. Fake. Apples are good, too. Um, Target has really nice lemons. Mm. Uh, And then the white towels, the welcome mat, San Pellegrino bottles every time. I know. I've used the same four bottles for, like, years. And it's time to, like, pitch them and just get fresh ones. But why? But why? Every time. And then my number one staging staple that I love and adore is in my backyard. It is my split leaf philodendron. I planted it in the yard specifically for staging. I cut a leaf. I bring a, you know, $2 glass vase. I put it in their house on their table or their, y'all, a leaf cut like that lasts for three to four to five weeks without you even changing the water. That's awesome. And if you have a single guy or a non-green thumb seller or someone who's even in a vacant house, it it will be fine. Mm-hmm. It will be fine. So those are my staging essentials. You know what I've done a few times this year that I'm really enjoying? So I have gotten to this point where I am the second listing agent a good bit. Yeah. So people are calling me because their house didn't sell and I was referred to me by someone else. So okay. I'm the second agent. I have the consultation with them on the phone for about five minutes. I <laughs> hear like, uh, I'm going to send you an email. All right, Bye. here's the thing. <laughs> I send them the pre-listing email, but then I ask, I tell them, I say, look, because you have been on the market, I am going to analyze your photos and give you, not only will you have my checklist, yeah. but I am going to give you a checklist specific to your house. Because I can see it. Because I can see it. And I will, I would like to come after both lists are done. And what do they say? They're like, that's wonderful. That's we great. will do it. Yes, they because at this point they're like, how can I help? Yes, like what can I do what, to make what this can work? I, they they are more than willing to do things. More than the fresh listing. Yeah, for sure. And um, it's nice because I literally go through their pictures room by room, and I do try to yeah. soften it in the email and say. I would move this here. You know, the goal is to try to remove anything red or orange from the home. I would remove this. I would get drapes here. Here's a link to some on Amazon that are Uh really cheap. Or, you know, I would get a white, anything that would be specific. And I go through and I just do it room by room. Yeah. And when I go for the first time that I'm meeting them. They do it. The, it is done. The house is ready. <gasps> then you don't have to give any tips. And they're so happy and because proud. the work is done. Mm-hmm. They have done the work. They're excited for me to see it. I'm mm-hmm. praising them. They're excited. They feel like it looks better too. They yep. just didn't know that that's what You're they like, needed to oh, do. Oh, I see now. And then we schedule pictures and it's listed within a couple of days. That's easy. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. So I, I do really enjoy being the second agent and just being able to really analyze the photos and find the problem. Like, why isn't this house selling? Yeah. And also there are times when from those photos, I've said, look, I don't know when you painted your interior, but I think that this is something we're just going to have to do based off of the photos that I'm seeing. Yeah. It feels dark. And I do try to explain my reasons behind my suggestions. Right. Right you know, briefly, just so they, I think that's good. Soft, it's like where you're, it. yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't hate your house. I'm just, no, my job is to help you. Yeah. So let's do this. I, that's all they want. They just want mm-hmm. the truth. They need to know what to do. They're, they are not realtors. No, they're not home stagers. They don't have a clue. Mm-hmm. They're not shopping with home buyers every day. Yeah. No idea. Um, okay. I wanted to also ask, so I kind of gave my essential list. If someone were starting now, like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. What are the first things you would tell them to acquire and where would you send them to shop for that? An agent who was going to keep a small amount of inventory. The biggest things that we use, I know you have your little 
list mm-hmm. too that you read us. But I, the canvas over the fireplace. Okay. To me, really, just when you walk into a living room of a vacant house, you, you have go, like an abstract. Yeah, yeah. I have like three that okay. I rotate. Um, white. Wait, kitchen. where do you acquire that? Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell me Hobby where to get Lobby it. Is usually the Hobby where Lobby. I, go. I think Kirkland sometimes Kirk, will have yes. a decent one. Target. Um, but Hobby Lobby just seems to always have TJ Maxx. What I need. Yeah, Marshalls. Those operations. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep going. Um. And so, canvas, white things for the kitchen. Okay. I have used solid white pieces in modern kitchens, Uh in dated kitchens. Uh Uh-huh. And it just, it doesn't matter what the kitchen is. It just looks nice. Yeah. Um, They have the orchids for the bathrooms. Where do you get those? Hobby Lobby. Yeah. I mean, they're all the same kind of place. Okay. The um, white things for the kitchen, if you're getting a big bowl or a pitcher or any of those things um walmart right now yeah. has some like pretty nice looking like white plain white serving pieces or bowls or whatever vases like a little white vase and then um i've gotten them at tj maxx for sure but also i saw on a on instagram a few days ago at costco mm. they had a really nice bowl set that was like $15 for three really big, nice bowls wow. that you could stage with. And then they had a little platter. So a little bit like, so you guys, just white. Yeah. White never goes out of style. No, it's a good classic neutral. And it goes kind of with everything. It it's does. not going to be a problem. Now, I do not stage my fixer-uppers. Right. When I am marketing a house as yeah. needs updating, come make it your own, mm-hmm. I do not stage it because I'm not trying to make it look fluffy. Yeah. I'm trying to say it is what it is. Yeah. And my seller will have it very clean, Mm -hmm. but that's all we're doing. Yeah. So I have two of those right now and I just feel like, and I even tell my photographer on those, Hey, we don't need a bunch of yeah. You've told us this brightening like, and editing, right, just, you know. Just we need it to be what it just is. Just take your photo and don't edit it and send them to me. Right, send I it just over. want I, I want to portray it as it is what it Realistically. is. Realistically, you know? okay. So you're keeping your storage items in your storage room. Yes. Your staging items in your storage room. I wanted to tell you how I store mine. <laughs> so because I have a rug and a um, coffee table. I have an upstairs bonus room. Yeah, It's like a seven, second living area, if you will. We don't spend a lot of time up there necessarily in the living area. So the staging items are there. Okay. And when the staging items are gone, my house is just emptier. Sure. <laughs> like they just go. Like they're in the house. Same with the bench. Like I keep the bench in my office. It's cute. But if it's out on use, then it's out of the office. And sure. it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I have one shelf worth of like the you know, pillows, blankets, vases, and stuff in my attic. Right. And there's space for it there, so it's not And I will say, like, full disclosure, y'all know I'm not the fluffiest person (laughs) in the world. (laughs) And I don't enjoy shopping. I don't enjoy Hobby Lobby. And the new agent that helps me. Yeah. So I've talked about her before, but she is just... She loves that stuff. Yeah. She loves finding a good deal. Mm -hmm. If she's out shopping for herself and sees something that would look stagey, stagey that (laughs) is on sale, she'll text it to me and be like, do you want me to grab it? I'm like, sure. Um, So it got to where I was asking her to go and do the staging. Right. So the problem with having everything in my house Right. Was and I have a driveway gate, I have an alarm, I have two dogs. Sometimes Tanner's home during the day. It's like she didn't want to be coming in and out of yeah. my house. So we were trying to find a neutral place to keep everything. And that's when we were using the listings for a long time. But then it just got to be too much. Yeah. And now that we have the storage unit, it's so nice because it's all in one place. We know what we have. She can go anytime and grab anything. Right. And I told her too, I said, you can use this for your, your, if you get listings, your listings. like you can yeah. go and look at the inventory. So, um, I am not, I don't do a lot of it putting it in myself. Right, yourself. There are times where I go with her. Yeah. But a lot of times I just let her. Right. I've seen what she does, and I'm like, you're good at this. It's fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. That's good. So it's nice having it out of the house. But if if I I didn't have her and I was just doing it, I would just use 
the office or the spare bedroom yeah. or a closet in my house or my outside storage. Right, because it's not that much stuff. No. No. I mean, I like it. It is more than I thought it was when your listings sell. <laughs> whenever you're, whenever you're you have full. it all back. And you're like, whoa, yeah. look at all this stuff. That's a lot of things. Yeah, but sometimes it's like the shelves are empty. Yeah, well, if they're out, so, that's good. Yeah. I like it. I think um, the last thing I would like to say is that occupied stage- staging is a little trickier because mm-hmm. you are dealing with people's own things and feelings and emotions. But I do think that the sellers really love the results. And so it feels very rewarding. I try to focus on the results because I know that the message that we are delivering can be tough, painful, but it is our job. And we have to remind them of that. You know, hey, if I was here for dinner, this would not bother me at all. Right. I am here looking at it from the eyes of a buyer. Yeah. And I'm just telling you the things I hear constantly. Right. And just it, you're you're always having to help them disconnect from their things and not take things personally. Yep. I haven't ever really had anyone get upset. I don't think you so. Know? I've had people kind of question or say, really, yeah. you think? And yeah. then they do it and it, I've, they're never disappointed. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, I think that's all good. Okay. Well, are you ready for a toast? Yeah. Okay. Today we're going to toast to um, Stacy Brown. I love Stacy. Stacy is local. Yes. And she requested this topic. Yeah. Just that we dive into getting started on staging a little bit more. Yeah, all those logistics. Yeah. So we want to cheers to Stacy. Yeah, thanks for the request. We this hope was that, a good one. Yeah, it was a really good one. We hope you collect <laughs> up some good staging items and, and make a big difference in your listings. Yeah, if y'all start your staging stuff, tag us in your pictures. Oh, yeah. Want to see. I want to see your closet or yeah. your shelf. Where are you your, keeping your staging like, stuff? Like, are you hiding it under the bed in your kid's room? Yeah. <laughs> like, that would be so funny. So thank you very much, Stacy, and cheers to you. Yay. Hey, goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. Let us know who we should toast to for the next episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hustle Humbly Podcast. If you have an episode, topic, or question, please email us at hustlehumblypodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. See you next week. Bye. This is the good life.